Good morning. Welcome to Mount Pisgah Baptist Church in lovely downtown Melbourne, Alabama. Today we're going to be reading from the book of Acts, chapter 4, verses 1 through 12. The title of this message is, There is no God like our God. Let us read. And as they spake unto the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in hold into the next day, for it was now eventide. Howbeit, many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of men was about five thousand. And it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes and Ananias the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and as many as were the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, but by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom he crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is a stone which was set at naught, of your builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none under, uh, other name under heaven given a man, among men whereby we must be saved. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your word. Pray for all those who have lost loved ones this past week. Pray for the sick and shut in. Pray for those who are recovering from surgeries. Pray, Lord, for our men and women in the military. Pray for the first responders, especially the police officers. And, Lord, I do pray that you would use this message for your honor and for your glory. And that if there's anyone within the sound of my voice this morning that doesn't know Jesus, that before it is too late, they will find him. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. As we live our lives, <clears throat> we need to remember who it is that we are calling out to and in relation with, in a relationship with. You see, nothing else even comes close to matching the God that we know. Luke opens the book of Acts by telling the story of Jesus' return to heaven as the disciples stood and watched. An angel appears to them and tells them to quit sitting around, to go back to Jerusalem, and to wait on the Holy Spirit to arrive, and prepare to do God's work. The Holy Spirit shows up in the power on them, in the sound of a mighty rushing wind, and it looks like tongues of fire falls upon the disciples. Because of the loud wind, people from all around came running to find out what had happened. It is there that Peter stands up and delivers the first sermon to the people. Shortly after the sermon, Peter and John are going into the temple. And when they pass a crippled man who is begging money, they tell him, the man, we, we have no money to give you, but we can share what we do have with you. And that is the power of Christ in their lives. They tell the man to get up and walk, and the man is healed, which provides another opportunity for Peter to preach. This time, 5,000 men, not counting women and children, begin a relationship with Jesus Christ during these times, and all the people were amazed at the power of God. Well, maybe not quite all. Let's look at verse 12 again. It says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven which given among men whereby we must be saved. If you're using your own Bible this morning, I want you to get a pen or a pencil and underline that verse. It's a very important verse. It is so important to remember the fact that there is no God like our God. 
and salvation can be found nowhere else. In Jeremiah 33, 3, it says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things, which thou knowest not. So as we call out, we need to make sure that we know who we're calling out to. The world around us every day is constantly telling us that this isn't true. That God is not really good. In today's society, folks believe that there is no such thing as being normal. So people can believe to be whatever they want to be. Boys can be girls. Girls can be boys. Or you can be a dog or a tree or whatever you desire to be. Unfortunately, they also believe that whatever they choose to believe about getting into heaven is true. But folks, that is far from the truth what the Bible teaches. Remember verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven among men, whereby we must be saved. In John fourteen six, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Then in Psalm eighty six eighteen, Peter prays, Among the gods there is none like unto thee, O Lord, neither are there any works like unto thy works. All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee, O Lord, and shall glorify thy name, for thou art and do doest wondrous things. Thou art God alone. Because of what Scripture says about God, there is not more than one path or more than one way to get to God. Jesus is the only way. The only way is through Jesus. And... and, and and having an intimate, personal love relationship with Him. If we try to get to God by good deeds, or by being doing really good things, or, or being a really good person, we will fall short. And at the end of time, we will stand before Jesus, and He will say, Depart from me. I never knew you. If you try to get to God by being successful, by being powerful, by being rich. You may get some thrills for a while, but in eternity you will fall short and be left with nothing. If you try to get to God by being good, a good religious person, by being in church as much as you can, and, and, and doing a ton of church things, again, you will fall short. Because those things are not enough in themselves to get you into heaven. You must grab hold of Jesus. Accept His Word and His presence in your life as you stumble through this life with Him at your side. There is no God like our God. One of the other difficult questions that I know some of you have asked and that our world definitely pushes on us is, what about other religions? Are they wrong? Unfortunately, this is one of the tough teachings of the Bible. That is hard to understand and that is hard to accept. But there is a massive difference between having a relationship with Jesus Christ and all the other religions that you could choose from. Sure, there are bits of truth in some of these other religions. But they fall short from fully knowing God for who He really is because they reject Jesus Christ. The two religions that cause the most confusion are Judaism and Islam. Why? because they claim to follow the same God that we do, little g in that God. Both have the same roots coming from the Old Testament, but they deviate 
when it comes to Jesus and having a personal relationship with God. The vast majority of folks of the Jewish faith are still waiting on the Savior to come. And when they break the law, a blood sacrifice is still needed to get forgiveness for sin. They know their disobediences to Him are deserving of death. For many Jews, God is impersonal, unknowable, and defined in a number of ways. The God of the Jews is nothing like the God that we have the privilege of knowing. Allah is distant and hard to please. Jesus is looked at as merely a great prophet and nothing more. But my, my Lord Jesus is much, much more. Muslims also follow a strict set of rules and guidelines called the five pillars from their God Allah. Muslims don't believe Jesus was the Son of God, but they do reverend Him as a holy prophet and are waiting for Him to come and play a special role before Judgment Day to finish the work of Allah. The God of the Muslims is nothing like the God that we know. When it comes to all the other religions, Buddhism, Hinduism, Scientology, Jehovah's Witness, Mormonism, and etc., they completely reject who Jesus is and the need for Jesus in order to be saved. The other thing to think about is that all the leaders and all the founders of every religion from Mohammed to Buddha from Moses to Abraham, they're all dead. And if you go to their graves, you will find their bones there. None of these gods that are portrayed are anything like the God that we know. The God that I know and have a relationship with is first and foremost personable. He is a God of relationships that wants to interact, that wants to talk, that wants to spend time with the people that He created. He created Adam and Eve. And the Bible tells us that God in the cool of the evening would take walks with them and spend time with them and communicate with them. He is not a God that is up in the sky and distant. But instead, He is a God that is available to all. He call, that calls out to Him. The God that we know came down to us to make this relationship possible. You see, Jesus was born of a virgin and was truly God-made man. He came to this earth. He walked in our shoes and He knows what it's like to have feelings, to have emotions, to have pain, and to have doubt. There's nothing you can do to make you, your way to God because you don't have to. He made a way to us. And His name is Jesus. God came down to you and s simply reaches out His hand for you to take a hold of it. The God that I know sacrificed Himself for you and for me. Because of sin in your life and my sin, because of your disobedience and my disobedience, you and I deserve nothing but death and eternal damnation in hell. Jesus during His life on earth took the pain, took the beating, and took the death that you and I deserve. And He did it when He was on the cross at Calvary. The death that Jesus died was what we deserved. And there is no other God that we could find that would be willing to sacrifice themselves for us. God has given us His Word. God has given us His Holy Spirit. Powerful and true. So we'll have the wisdom and the protection 
to stand against the enemy. Are you ready to commit your life and soul to the Lord? If the Holy Spirit is dealing with you today, please, I beg you, do not reject Him. Friend, before you leave this building today, you will make a, a choice. You will choose to follow Jesus or you will reject Him and choose to follow Satan. Choice is yours. Jesus is waiting with open arms to receive you. So I beg you, if the Holy Spirit's dealing with your heart, just, just surrender. Who's it going to be? Jesus and heaven? Or Satan and hell? You can't have it both ways. The choice is yours. All you have to do is admit you're a sinner. Believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And believe that He died for your sins. Confess and repent of your sin. In Romans 10.9 it says, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised Him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It doesn't say maybe. It doesn't say perhaps. It doesn't say might be. It says thou shalt be saved. If you'd like to receive Jesus by faith, just pray a simple prayer. The prayer doesn't save you. It's just a way of asking God to forgive you of your sins. Lord, I am a sinner. I repent of my sins. I believe Jesus is your son and that he died to pay the penalty for my sin. By faith, I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. You prayed that prayer and you meant it in your heart. Jesus heard you and forgave your sins. So you might say, well, what, what happens next? You need to find you a Bible preaching, Bible believing, Bible teaching church and get involved with it. You need to find a quiet place to read and study God's Word and to pray and talk to God. You need to follow Jesus in scriptural baptism. And you need to tell others what Jesus has done for you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I pray this message would touch someone's life and change, change their very soul, Lord, that they would totally surrender to you. Don't hold anything back. Just surrender to you. And Lord, I pray that you forgive me of my sins and that you use me for your honor and glory with each and every passing day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.